Woman Jacker, hello to my beautiful Bush Clay Group friends. I'm joining you today from Westerfolds Park. It's a beautiful day. I have the newer, the sun shining down on me. Lots of beautiful animal friends around. I've seen wattle birds and wahs and some magpies all gathering around and feeding this morning. It's a beautiful day to be out in nature and I hope that you get to be outside today too. Now you might notice some special markings on my face. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Um, I'm going to start by in the way that I always begin and that's by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land upon which I join you here today and that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and in particular when I'm here at Westerfolds I think about their name Wurundjeri. We have Warun, the Manigam and Jury. The witchetty grub. So from the most beautiful tall managum down to the smallest witchetty grub, the Wurundjeri people have shown us how to care for our nation and for that I'm very thankful. So we might get started with our song. We might sing Barramundi this morning. Are you ready to sing with me? Here we go. Barramundi, Barramundi, cockatoo, <coughs> cock to emu and koala, emu and koala, kangaroo, kangaroo, sugar glider, sugar glider, tazzy devil, tazzy devil, platypus and Wombat, platypus and wombat, crocodile, crocodile. I hope you guys all joined in. I know how much we all love singing that song together. Now, today we are going to talk a little bit about fire and the importance of fire in our lives. The Wurundjeri people used fire for lots of different reasons and they still do and so do we. Fire is an, a, an essential part of our lives. We use it for warmth, we use it for cooking, we use it for tool making, we use it for ceremonies. There's so many different reasons why we need fire in our lives. Now when a fire is finished, what's, at the, what, what, what's left over at the end of a fire? I wonder if you know. When a fire is finished, you end up with charcoal. And that's what I've used to paint my face today. So today, <clears throat> I wonder if at home you might be able to get your hands on some charcoal as well. If you have a fire pit in your garden. Or you might know some a neighbour that has that can maybe give you some charcoal. Or if you don't, you could even just use some paints. So today I'm going to use some charcoal to make a bit of a paste and we're going to, I'm going to show you some symbols. The Aboriginal symbol for fire and the Aboriginal symbol for campsite. So I've crushed up the charcoal with a mortar and pestle. If you don't have a mortar and pestle you can use a rock and a flat surface at home or you could even just use the charcoal just like a pencil. You could just write with the charcoal. But today I've crushed it up and I've added some water. And I've already drawn them to show you. So up the top here, these wavy lines, that is the symbol for fire. And underneath here, I've made the symbol for the campsite. Because we're gathered here today, I've got my beautiful fire in front of me. So those are the two symbols. You can maybe practice drawing those somewhere at home. Now, before I leave you today, I'd like to read you a quick story, one of my favourite stories. The story is called, I'm going to get a little bit closer to the camera. Where the Forest Meets the Sea. It's a beautiful story by an author, Jeannie Baker. And she has used collage. She's used lots of different things from nature to make the pictures from her story. <coughs> We go. My father knows a place you can only reach by boat. Mm. 
not many people go there and you have to know the way through the reef Can you see the beautiful things in the reef and their boat floating up high when we arrive cockatoos rise from the forest in a squawking cloud my father says there's been a forest here for over a hundred million years My father says there used to be crocodiles here and kangaroos that lived in trees. Maybe there still are. I follow a creek into the rainforest. I pretend it is a hundred million years ago. <gasps> On the banks of the creek, the vines and the creepers try to hold me back. I push through. Now the forest is easy to walk in. Can you see him there, walking through the forest? I sit very still. I watch and I listen. I wonder how long it would take the trees to grow to the top of the forest. I find an ancient tree it's hollow. Perhaps Aboriginal forest children played here too. I climb inside the tree. It's dark, but the twisted roots make windows. It's a good place to hide. My father's made a fire it's, and he's cooking the fish that he caught. I like fish cooked this way. But I feel sad because the day has gone so quickly. My father says we'll come here again someday. But will the forest still be here when we come back? Well, thank you everybody for joining me today. Um, I hope that I get to see you again really soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.